Welcome friends, uh, in this video we will be talking about the transposition of a poly A retrotransposons by target site prime reverse transcription enzyme. Okay. Now it's a mouthful of name. Anyways, uh, this uh, type of transposition is the complex transposition. This is not very simple. So I recommend you to go back if you don't see the basic videos of transposition. You see first or those videos, then come back and see this video. Now uh, in this case, we have talked about uh, this kind of DNA transpose transposable element structure. It is uh, having uh, the gene coding region uh, or the protein coding re region at the middle. Here it is denoted by open reading frame 1 and open reading frame 2. And this stretch of genes are flanked with UTRs or untranslated regions at both the ends. And at the 3' prime end of untranslated region, right after the UTR, there is a poly A region. That's why it is called the poly A retrotransposon. And why it is called the retrotransposon? Because this kind of transposition is processed uh, via production of complementary DNA from the mRNA. So what is going on in this case at the very first level it is about the transcription of whole transposon and in any kind of retrotransposition we can see that those transposition is not uh, done by the copy, uh, cut and paste job it is rather done uh, via the production of mRNA and from uh, and production of cDNA from the mRNA with the help of reverse transcriptase enzyme now in this case uh, the transcription of this stage of the transposon is done 5 prime UTR from the 5 prime UTM towards the 3 prime UTR, UTR and right after the 3 prime UTR uh, poly A sequence lie. Now this poly A sequence is really important because this sequence uh, determines at what site in the target DNA this transposable element is to is going to bind because that before uh, the synthesis of complementary DNA the transposition actually begins for this type of transposons. Okay. Now you, you know what I mean uh, in a few moment. Okay. Now after that we must go out through the translation process because uh, remember that middle region of this mRNA will consist of open reading frame 1 and open reading frame 2 which will produce different proteins which are required for the transposition. Now they will produce the proteins, the necessary protein for the transposition. One of those proteins are called the reverse transcriptase and th another protein will be the uh, endonuclease because we, we need to make a cut onto the target DNA which will be conducted by the endonuclease enzyme. and Reverse transcriptase enzyme is also needed uh, to make the complementary DNA from this mRNA. Now both of the proteins will bind to this mRNA and bring it to the target DNA site at a particular location of target DNA where you have poly T. Now this poly T can e eventually bind with poly A sequence which is present at the three terminal end uh, and it will bind to it and right after binding of this poly A onto this poly T region we can see here uh, this is the binding event is done and then a single stranded break is made with the help of the endonuclease enzyme. Now uh, this mRNA is attached to this target DNA sequence with the help of poly and poly T interaction which is not strong enough. Now we need to synthesize the DNA because DNA RNA hybrid cannot coexist in this situation so we need to create the DNA intermediate and for this creation of the DNA intermediate we must rely on the DNA reverse transcriptase en enzyme. It will uh, produce the complementary DNA sequence uh, by utilizing this mRNA as a template and it is doing so in this next picture which is clearly illustrated here. And right after the production of this complementary DNA, the other strand or the RNA strand uh, in the other, uh, other hand is disrupted or it is degraded and it is replaced with uh, another layer of DNA sequences and all this DNA synthesis is conducted with the help of DNA polymerase enzyme and right after the DNA synthesis is done, uh, ligase is utilized and uh, utilized to seal the nick between the gaps as a result of this gap sealing. As you can see, this strand previously, this green color strand was mRNA but now it is being replaced by uh, the strand in the top uh, which is the DNA strand and this chewing up event is done by uh, nuclease enzymes and uh, the synthesis d is conducted by the DNA polymerase but the ligation is conducted by the DNA ligase and right after that what we can make we are making the stretch of the DNA inside this uh, target DNA region so at the end we produce this site and at the middle of this uh, DNA there are regions for coding ORF1 and ORF2. Uh, again this uh, segment of DNA is ready for the transposition. Now we have seen this kind of transposition in case of line DNA which is called long interspersed nuclear elements which are pretty common in eukaryotic cells. So you can see how complicated an eukaryotic cell transposition really is.
Okay, now we have seen this kind of retrotransposons in case of virus 2, but the difference between the viral retrotransposition and this uh, kind of eukaryotic DNA retrotransposition or poly A type of DNA retrotransposition is in this region because in case of those uh, viral retrotransposition, they produce complementary DNA once they have this mRNA sequence with the help of reverse transcriptase. They make those both of the strand of the complementary DNA and they drag those strand and then incorporate it into the DNA. But in this case, uh, uh, we can see that they uh, just first take this mRNA and attach it onto the target site by making a single stranded nick. Then it starts to synthesize uh, the strand of the DNA, then chewing, chew up this mRNA, then finally synthesize another strand of the DNA and then incorporate it onto the DNA. Okay, so that is uh, much more step uh, uh, are involved and much more energy is involved in this case of eukaryotic DNA. Okay, so that's it and I hope it will help you. Thank you.